There's a lot to mine from this material. A lot can be said about the secrets we carry with us to protect our loved ones, the continual trauma it can have on our lives to live with it. And we also don't know what pains and experiences others may be living with. I feel like this film can create a dialogue about understanding. So as the person at the helm of it all, what sort of unique perspective did this story give you and how has it challenged your thinking across taking it from book to feature, filming it, and then looking at it in its final form? Yeah, no, it's really interesting um, territory uh, that you're talking about and, and the deep kind of themes, as you say, are, are kind of all came together for me. And a feeling that a lot of my films deal with this idea that the past and the present are like hand in glove, you know, that we live in a way that, um, is un unavoidably a kind of a connection between things that have happened to us and things that are still to happen to us and how we live our life. But the one thing Jane Harper does in her books and particularly in The Dry that really is quite significant is she then uses landscape in this big metaphoric way. You know, she uses landscape to um, create a sense that, um, you know, a physical manifestation of your psychological state, if you like. You know, we've got scenes with, you know, Eric Banner's character, Aaron Falk, standing in a river that is dry and dead and hasn't seen water for a decade, remembering as a young man swimming in that very same river as a child. And, and uh, I really love that about her books. Um, and I think that probably speaks to the other part of your question about as a filmmaker. I mean, it's like, how does cinema tell these big themes? And uh, I think a lot of American cinema has done it very well. And I think that um, uh, landscape in Australia is something the world's interested in. But so as a filmmaker, I feel like I want to take an American audience. I want to take people to a part of the world they've never seen before, you know, shot on big, large format lenses in this big, epic, cinematic way. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question completely, but that idea of landscape um, and... Uh, you know, the, the kind of metaphoric manifestation of, of your experience in, in the landscape you inhabit was pretty, pretty key to the film, actually. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that was like, so, that was one of the things that I actually noted was that the, the landscape and how dry it is, is uh, it, leads into, it leads into that theme of desperation because there's that desperation yeah. there for the character, uh, Aaron, as well. Um, but you brought up something yes. that was really interesting to me when you were talking about, uh, you know, our past and present kind of going hand in hand. Um, do you have a healthy relationship with your past and memories, if I may ask? No, of course. It's really interesting and also speaks to why I chose to do the film. Uh, I grew up in the Blue Mountains outside of Sydney. So about two hours west of Sydney, there's this amazing mountain range and it's kind of a frontier really early settlers couldn't work out how to even cross the mountains it was like so imposing and then people would go up there and disappear and you know as they desperately tried to get to the other side of it and and I grew up up there and all my childhood was in the Australian bush and I left when I was 15 moved to the city Sydney you know made an urban life became a filmmaker moved with a young family to Melbourne lived in the city and my experiences of going back, you know, to where I grew up are fascinating. Running into people that I knew from my childhood in the local supermarket, you know, someone who, you know, I'd had a massive crush on as a young, you know, 14 year old and running into her in the supermarket. And she had three kids, was married and lived 100 meters from where she grew up. So, you know, for me, it, it does speak of this idea that, that in life, many people leave, and other people stay. And when you put those people back together, their experiences are different. And I didn't want the film to judge either way. That's why I love the character of Gretchen, who I think is fantastic. Um, I think you, I just wanted to see what that drama is, you know, when you put those people together. And um, and I don't, I don't know about your experience, you know, but you talk to people, people either that they know people that have left or stayed or like it, it's kind of a, um, nomadic life for some people and then for other people it's more a settled life and 
and neither is better than the other, but there's great drama in putting them uh, back together in a film. So yes, um, personally, a massive connection to that idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like I, uh, I still listen to a lot of the music that I listened to when I was in high school and middle school during those formative years, just cause I like to play back the tape of everything yeah and just and that's why i like going to the movies is because it, it it allows me to kind of look at those memories from a different perspective um so and yeah that's what I got yeah. Out of this. yeah yeah that's kind of like one of the things eric banner and i talk about a lot is the um the universality of the themes of a film like the dry it, it, it can play anywhere in the world the themes are very um you know it's a humanist film about living a life and you know it's got detective mystery elements but you know it's a very you know visceral real story and and yet we don't want to not be highly specific to the world we live in so it's like making a universal film that's also set in a part of australia and is very real to that part of australia and uh, and they're the stories that really appeal to us other rather than making a generic story you know you know um, mm -hmm. making a highly specific story that should evoke, you know, as you're describing, a reflection perhaps in people about their own choices about leaving, staying, you know. Uh, and, you know, like as um, Eric Banner's character meeting uh, Gretchen, Genevieve O'Reilly's character, it's like, um, you know, those are those the early love story that we all share as young people in our teenage years. <laughs> and... Um, and years down the track kind of reflecting on that and what would happen if you met that person um, 20 years later. Yeah, that was that you actually answered one of the questions I was going to ask you about about that. I can only imagine that it's challenging for you to adapt this and think about the number of detective stories that are out there. And I wonder, and you, you probably think Very about true. how am I going to go against expectations? And how am I going to lean into what remains so fascinating about detective stories? Obviously, yeah. you have <laughs> the novel as a guide. Um, and you talked a little bit about this, but what discussions were you having with all your collaborators to strike that balance and play around in that cinematic sandbox to keep audiences on their toes? Yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, great, <laughs> great question, actually. It probably went to the heart of everything. You know, I was looking at this book and going, how do we make this cinematic? There is so much incredible detective television, you know, particularly the Scandi Noir, uh, the UK. Um, then there's also, you know, some amazing series that have come out of the US. Audiences are used to a very high bar in terms of the detective thriller genre um, on TV. And so what makes this cinematic? Why make a big feature film, a big movie? Why make a movie of it? Um, and I think the two things that we really talked a lot about were the visual and cinematic scale of how we told the story. So, it, you know, we shot at large format. You know, these new Panavision lenses, like massive, like that insight into that landscape is truly and utterly epic, you know, in terms of transporting someone there and promising and delivering what it promises to an audience that comes to the cinema. And, uh, and then if people down the track watch it on other, you know, um, streaming services, they're able to get a feeling that it was made for the cinema. But one of the things that I've become increasingly fascinated by as well is the narrative um, storytelling style of uh, work for the smaller screen, which I've done. You know, I did a big series in Morocco, Deep State uh, with uh, Mark Strong and I uh, did another series, The Slap, which was Emmy nominated. I've directed TV and I've kind of enjoyed it. But cinema can have a different narrative um, uh, approach. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, it doesn't have to be as fast at the beginning. It can allow you to kind of enjoy meeting this ensemble of characters that are suspects and these two crimes and, be seduced into you know and then the challenge of the narrative of these two crimes and inviting the audience to go well you could work it out take your time think about this you know it's like um teasing the audience like an agatha christie book would have done to go come on you can beat the detective here and i found this in the narrative form of cinema perfect for this you know you can have a bigger ensemble of characters you can thread the stories together 
Um, and then how does it resolve? Where do you take people? You've got two crimes. Do you solve them? Where do you take your protagonist? Where... And so all of, our, all of our discussions around that were all about how to make an original work of cinema that could speak, you know, and in a genre that we love. I'd never directed this genre before. Um, and, you know, interestingly, there's a second and potentially a third book with that detective. So now that it's been such a big hit in Australia, I feel all the pressure about whether to do another one. <laughs> um, but um, but you, you, you're kind of right. It's, it's, it's a genre that people know and they've got, they've seen really amazing work in with twists and turns and, you know, clever plotting and, and TV does plot really well. Like, you know, when you direct TV, it's like plot, 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 more, plot, more, plot, more, plot, you know, whereas I think cinema, it's like the, the microscope into the human condition that cinema allows you to be, you know, you can look right inside these amazing actors. I mean, Eric Banner, one of our great actors giving a, you know, for me, you know, like a gift of a performance. Um, as a director, but you really feel like it's forensic in terms of the way you're able to explore this human being. Um, no, I love it. I, I'm, I'm, you know, a great passionate lover of cinema. And, uh, and I think there's innovative ways to release cinema and innovative ways for audiences to consume cinema. And some people, you know, um, will still consume it in, in their home and that's wonderful. But, um, but we did everything we could to make sure if you went to the movies, you'd really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I certainly did. I, I wanted to ask a little more about that narrative template that you're talking about and how you organically transition from uh, t uh, one timeline to timeline. Uh, not an oh, easy yeah. thing to do, by the way, but Eric Bana is so good at tipping off to the audience that he has seen some things and perhaps there's some... Uh -huh. Uh, that he doesn't know, but we feel that weight of uh, complexity with him. Um, he wears that emotion so well. Uh, when did you realize in your career how much of a gift subtlety can be as a storyteller? And were you surprised that uh, Mr. Banna could make those transitions so smooth by just what he reveals in his eyes? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a really interesting calibration as a filmmaker that you're doing to try and work out when to be overt and muscular and to give the audience a real hit of some information and clearly and you know muscular like a punch in the face you know and then other moments where it's more nuanced and subtle and but but I always go back to you know the famous Billy Wilder quote you know which is um let the audience work out that one plus one equals two and they'll love you forever you know, I, I just feel like audience, I mean, the, the Dry has been released in Australia recently. It's made $20 million, which for Australia is like hundreds of millions in the US. It's like a, it's, a, it's one of the highest grossing Australian films of all time. Yeah, and what I love about it, audiences that have queued up to see it and everything is, I didn't dumb this film down at all. I made the film I wanted to make. I made a sophisticated, intelligent, grown up, kind of detective mystery and people went to it and they like like so there's always this pressure you have oh if you want to you know it's almost like this lowest common denominator you've got to dumb it down you've got to dumb it you know it's too complex it's too sophisticated for audiences and and I have never judged audiences I think audiences are as sophisticated as you and I having this conversation it's it's you know who you make the film for and so uh, I I actually really enjoy the subtlety you're talking about in performance and, you know, you can have subtle moments that are deeply, like I said, like a microscope into a little moment, but then you can also have big thrilling moments and, you know, scenes of kind of, I mean, the scene, um, uh, you know, at the centre of the film between Gretchen and Falk. I'm not giving anything away, but it's a 10 minute long sequence between those two incredible actors, which is just, I, on the day as a director, I kind of got out of the way and, and just let, let that unfold. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I have so much more I wanted to ask you about the poetic nature of your reveals, the, the beauty and the devastation, um, the Under the Milky Way song, also great. But this <laughs> That's is, a great song. Yeah, this is so wonderful. <laughs> I, I really appreciate your time and I can't wait to have a dialogue with other people about this film. Yeah, thank you so much for your um, 
attention to detail about the film. That was a fantastic conversation about it. I really appreciate that you've really kind of looked deep into the film and what I was trying to do. So thanks. Thanks, mate. It's lovely to chat. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, mate. We have truth. Under the Milky Way tonight